Dr. LaHaye, I want to begin by asking, do you see some similarities between the Jimmy Carter era and what's happening now that was the basis for the moral majority being formed? Very definitely, because Jimmy Carter didn't seem to know what was going on or what to do to solve the problem. Our present president doesn't seem to get it. He doesn't understand that some of the things he's introducing that many of us call raw socialism. Uh, it's a different name, but uh, it's essentially government control and government domination of everything. And he, he sees that as a panacea, but instead it's going to work against our country and bring us closer to the apocalypse. Are we now living in the end times from your perspective? Very definitely, Governor. Uh, very definitely, of course, obviously. Uh it is day two at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington. And if the right is your wing, this is like a carnival without the rides or the corn dogs. It has everything. The taxpayer watchdog furry the gung-ho young Republicans, the veterans of the culture wars. Last night, Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman offered the do it moment of the year from just out of camera view about the new RNC chairman, Michael Steele. Michael Steele, you be the man. You be the man. You be the man? You be the man. You be the man. No, you be the man. The little Michelle Bachbonics there. Uh, at, at conservative confabs like this, the refrains don't usually disappoint. The hills are alive with the sounds of conservatism. Global warming doesn't exist. The media is full of liberals. Somebody wants to take away your guns. Uh, and of course, the it refrain of the moment for this particular CPAC is President Obama is a socialist. Earlier this week, we heard the world's best salesman of socialism address the nation. It's all one big down payment on a new American socialist experiment. Lenin and Stalin would love this stuff. This, he's a socialist thread in the conservative weave these days. It means different things to different people. When I hear Obama is a commie, I think you are not a serious person and I don't have to pay very much attention to the rest of the things that you say. That's one way to react. A politically conservative person might hear it and think, political epithet, political accusation. Oh no, these Democrats are going to make our country more like the dreaded Sweden. But there is a third way that Obama's a commie is heard by a, a big and poorly understood but powerful group of Americans. In 1995, a book came out called Left Behind, a novel of the Earth's last days. As you might expect, it is an apocalyptic tale of good and evil. It's about the end of the world, the rapture, the Antichrist. It, it is, it's fiction, but it's based on the Bible's book of Revelation. Left Behind eventually became a 16-book series. And to date, get this, it has sold more than 65 million copies. 65 million. That's not a typo or a speco or whatever. 65 million. That is as many copies of Catcher in the Rye that have ever been bought ever, either for pleasure or to sate the insistence of 10th grade teachers. It, that is 10 million more copies sold than Merriam-Webster dictionaries since the start of Merriam-Webster dictionaries, and they have been on sale since 1898. About the first book in the series, the first Left Behind book, Reverend Jerry Falwell said this, quote, in terms of its impact on Christianity, it's probably greater than that of any other book in modern times outside the Bible. So what's the connection to Obama the socialist here? Well, Left Behind authors Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins came to this studio the other night because they have a new book out that's called Luke's Story. It's part of a different series, but it's the same authors. When I asked them about their thoughts on the new presidency, Tim LaHaye immediately, without me prompting him, raised the Obama is a socialist meme. I hope it'll work, but it'll mean that everything conservatives have stood for for years have been false and the things that have made America great uh, can be supplanted by socialism. And I think that's what it is. It's very cleverly packaged and conveniently presented socialism. You think that Obama is sort of a secret socialist who's hiding his real agenda? I don't know if he's hiding anything. I think he's just doing what he believes. He believes that government can control everything and supply everything and pay for everything and support everything and take, as he said, from the haves and give to the have-nots. 
No, it is, it is not all that surprising that Tim LaHaye went right to the Obama is a socialist, Obama is a commie thing, right? Tim LaHaye is a top-tier, kingmaker, conservative activist. He helped found the moral majority. He's been right at the center of all of this stuff. What was surprising to me, though, was to realize that the Obama's a commie idea, it isn't just a political epithet. It also has theological implications, religious implications for a lot of people, for the end times rapture ready folks. The process is going to be according to the end times prophecies. And you're, you can't have a world socialist government headed by an antichrist without similar patterns of going on today. Wait a minute. World Socialist Government, you can't have the Antichrist. That's before the rapture. No, no. The, the stage setting. We're back to getting things ready for that because okay. it can't happen overnight. As you can tell, we're both a little fuzzy on the details here about whether world communism is before or after the Antichrist, whether or not Barack Obama is a symptom of the end of the world or a cause of the end of the world. But Obama and the end of the world are definitely theologically at least in some people's minds, linked. Talking about um, Christianity in broad terms is something that has been done publicly throughout the history of our country. Talking about very specific um, interpretations of Christianity that involve things like the Antichrist, that involve the rapture, that involve the end times. These are things that are more popular now than ever before because of your work, your cultural work in popularizing those ideas. Do you see those as having political implications? Is it part of your activism as a, as a, as a conservative activist in addition to being an evangelical to popularize those ideas? I don't think so. My, my concern is for the country. And when I look at prophecy, and by the way, I think one of the reasons that it, prophecy is so popular today is people are looking for answers. They recognize the world is in a state of change. Okay, what is going to happen when this change takes place? And the Bible has a good scenario. And I'm not worried about Antichrist right now because the truth is the rapture has to take place first. And then after a period of t indeterminate time, the Antichrist will come on the scene. Yes, so we don't have to worry about the Antichrist till after the rapture? That's no. right. Oh, takes a load off my mind. Right. <laughs> All right. And, and, and you see, there is what we call a stage setting. The Antichrist isn't going to take over the whole world all in a moment of time without preparation for the people of the world. And you have to admit that some of the great intellectuals of our time believe that the only way you'll have world peace is to have world socialism. Now, they may call it something else, but it's where the government controls everything. And when the government supplies money and decides who can be poor and who can be rich and so on, uh, that's social government. So you think if that you think that Obama is a socialist, and you think that a world socialist system is a predicate for uh, is a necessary precondition for the rapture, and then after the rapture, then there's the antichrist. Yes. So Obama is the antichrist doesn't make sense, even if everybody believes everything right. you believe. He, he might be a closet Christian, you know, he claims to be a Christian, so if he is, when the rapture takes place, he's out of here too. I know it's sometimes a little hard to follow, but fascinatingly, apparently another one of the reasons we can be fairly sure that Obama is not the Antichrist is because he's not popular enough. So sure, he's Antichrist-ish, but he's not the Antichrist because he is not popular enough. Everybody would love him if he was the Antichrist, and a lot of people don't like Obama. Now, none of us have the right to judge anybody else's religious beliefs. And Jerry Jenkins and Tim LaHaye have sold literally tens of millions of books, tens of millions, based on their religious beliefs. They've sold them to millions and millions of Americans. But if you were curious as to why there was a John McCain ad in the presidential race that seemed to imply that Obama maybe possibly was the Antichrist, know that it probably wasn't meant as a joke. And know that if you hear President Obama derided as a commie, as a socialist these days, some people hear that as a joke, some people hear that as political criticism, and lots and lots of Americans hear that as almost a, a dog whistle signal that the end is near. And they see that as good news.